Most people come to divine spiritual wisdom because they want to better themselves or better the world or help a loved one. Most people come because they want to improve something. And as we travel on the path of divine spiritual wisdom, we need to remember that everything that crosses our path, everything that makes life nice or difficult, is a learning opportunity. It allows us to refine ourselves. And that process of refinement, like the alchemy that produces gold, might be hot at times. It might be uncomfortable. But we need to welcome that resistance. And remember that as long as we don't give in to the patterns of the ego, to the compulsive patterns, to the repetitive thoughts that do not serve us anymore, or a way of feeling that might interfere with really serving from our higher selves, as long as we don't give in to these temptations, we are doing a great job. We are on our way to producing light, and it is just a matter of time. Each time resistance comes up, we can call on the Divine. We can use prayer. We can work with Nam. Uh, we also have a responsibility, as, especially as teachers, to look at uh, are we unifying? Are we looking at the best? Are we treating people that we interact with as our brothers and sisters? Uh, or are we just still stuck in our body of pain and looking through that, those old um, false uh, shell around us that, that we sometimes think is reality, but it's actually not the reality. That's why we have our prayer practice. That's why we work in community. That's why we work on ourselves so we can break that open and then let that light shine and be a unifying force. And remember that the first step of, of wisdom is kindness and to be loving in our communication and to see the best in people and to look at every person as a brother or a sister. That's someone that is precious, that's a part of your family that you would want to treat kindly. Um, this is a practice. We're human beings and we practice. We're doing the best that we can. Each day we try to be a little bit better. And um, at the end of the day, we really can only judge ourselves. So we might come across somebody and think that what they're doing is, is not the right thing and maybe think, hey, you know, I don't think that's spiritual living, but it's, it's really, we can only look at our own self at the end of the day and, and look at our day and say, hey, okay, is there anything today that I'd like to repair, that I'd like to redo? Let me look at that. Let me be conscious. Let me try again tomorrow. Let me try to do it better tomorrow. By being in touch with the mind, you're in touch with nothing else but the two pillars. These two forces, good, bad, light, dark, up, down, in, out, heaven, earth, want, don't want, right? Which is generating an unceasing creation around us. The force of Nam, the power of the word, can, give, can end that so that one is liberated from the confines of the physical world and reborn into this spiritual world, where one is able to operate within the physical world, but one is no longer of it. This is this, what they call being reborn in the spirit. We are in the ascending vibration of the next 13,000 years. This is the age of love. What we have not yet done before, we must do now. We must cultivate ourselves so that we can see and hear and think and feel through the eyes of God, through the ears of God. How do we do that? How do we do that? We've talked about many, many ways. We have our spiritual discipline, right? We do our mantra practice. We learn about ourselves, but we need something more. We need we need that strength that comes from spirit, that comes from relying and trusting wholly in the strength of the divine.